Hey everybody, it's Mark Arnstein, Remax Hallmark, and of course, livingnorthtoronto.com. This is vlog number 63, and we're talking today about why does the government think there is a housing shortage? So over the last little while, especially with last year's market and what things that happened across the country from uh, Vancouver all the way out to the Maritimes, we've seen a very robust, very increase in market activity. And one of the big reasons for that has been the fact that money has never been as cheap as it has been in a very, very, very long time, most likely probably in our lifetimes. So this is causing lots of demand, not a lot of supply, and a big surge in home prices because there's only so many listings come up at any given time and it's making people want to buy and do the upgrades uh, take advantage of the low cost of money. Now, one of the things government has been putting out there are all kinds of different ideas about how things they can do to help slow down the marketplace. And one idea was happening right now is talking about being done out west, which is where they're going to put a deferred uh, tax on properties over a million dollars. So what that means is that the tax would be amortized from a certain period of time to the time you go to sell the property, and you'd be paying interest on that differential between the time the property was assessed and the time that you go and sell the property. So which could in fact cost you upwards anywhere between say two, three, four hundred thousand dollars depending on the growth of your property. Now, what it's gonna do is actually gonna have an opposite effect on it. It's gonna actually slow down the market and it's gonna create less inventory because people are gonna say, well, whatever, I'm not gonna move because it doesn't make any sense. I'm not gonna pay this crazy tax because my property is worth over a million dollars. I might as well wait until the time comes when I pass away, unfortunately, and let my estate deal with it then. So, in fact, it's gonna help create a shortage of inventory as opposed to extra inventory. So I don't understand why we keep taxing and taxing and taxing when it doesn't make any sense. It helps create more opportunities for people to buy and afford to purchase homes. So one of the things I wanna talk about today, obviously is what's happening in Toronto, and let's look at the City of Toronto land transfer tax. So this has been around for about 13 years. And in 2020, we had a massive growth in real estate in the City of Toronto. Uh, I believe there was around 95,000 transactions that occurred, uh, which generated the city in the neighborhood of 1.4 billion, yes, 1.4 billion dollars in revenue. And if you look at the time when the tax was implemented from 13 years ago, we're talking right now, potentially somewhere on the averages, and uh, it's kind of a bit fuzzy math, but let's say somewhere between seven to eight billion dollars in revenue over the last 13 years. So the city complains that there is a housing shortage, but my question is, what in the world have you done with all that money? And where has that money gone to? City of Toronto has one of the lowest mill rates, which is what these calculate your property tax on, in the whole entire province. So let's just increase the mill rate for property tax, but with a caveat, if you are a widower or a pensioner, um, then you would get a rebate back off of that increase in, uh, in the mill rate so that you're basically paying the same amount of tax as you're paying right now. The other thing that's happening is that the federal government, especially in Ontario because we have harmonized sales tax, HST, is really cracking down on the small independent builders on uh, doing either brand new construction, uh, infill, taking an old house, knocking it down, building a brand new house on top of it, or even doing a mass renovation. And it's gotten to the point where literally there is no money to be made for these guys in doing these kinds of projects anymore because they can't do it legitimately because once they buy the property and before they even put a shovel on the ground, they are in the hole 13%. So let me take you over to the whiteboard and let me show you how this all works. So if you're a builder today and you want to buy a property that's say in, up in Lawrence Park, North, North Toronto area, a 25 foot lot of home is gonna cost you around $1.8 million. Land transfer tax is gonna be 64,950, that's your provincial and city of Toronto. Construction costs right now have gone through the roof because of COVID unfortunately, and supply and demand with materials. So you're looking about a million, 100,000 on construction, 
uh, HST is going to run you $143,000 on the 1.1, and then you're going to have around approximately $50,000 in soft costs. So your total for that is going to run you $3,157,950 in actual hard cost numbers. Okay, so now it's about two years later, because that's how long it takes to process. You're looking about a year to get through the community of adjustments and you're also looking about another 10 months for construction time. So basically it's about a two year process. So now the house goes on the market and then based on today's values, approximately, let's say you can sell the house for 3,500,000. Commission will cost you about $140,000. So it'll be 18,200 HST. The $455,000 comes off the sale price at $3.5 million. I'll explain that more in a second. Um, out of that 455, because you spent a million one in uh, construction costs, you'll get a rebate back of $130,000, offset some of the 455, and with the uh, HST on the commission, 18,200, you're actually in the hole, $104,000 approximately. And that is the differential between what we cost us to build versus what we sell the house for and all the costs to get back out of the property. So here is my idea and let me show you and how to move forward with how the government can help change this and make it more affordable for the builders who are doing these kinds of projects. Instead of charging HST on the finished sale price, since you didn't pay HST when you bought the land for our $1.8 million, pay the 1.8 back out of the 3.5 and then pay the HST on that amount instead of the full finished product, which makes to me way more sense. So if you break it down again, so you'd have your sale price at $3.5 million, commission of 140,000, then you'd have 18,200 on HST on the commission. Uh, then now here's a changer. Your HST instead of being over $400,000 before, I think it was like 455, is now 221,000 based off of 1.7 million because it took the 1.8 out of the equation, which now gives you still the rebate of 130,000 because that's the same as it was on the cost of construction. But now it's not huge money, but at least the person who built the house is walking away with $130,000. That's only a 4.1% profit on the amount of money that they invested. But here's the thing is that you've created the product and the which people want. And the thing that the government doesn't understand today is one, people don't want to go through a two year process to build and, ha and, buy and have a custom home, nor do they want to go through the headaches of doing it because not everyone wants to be able to put the design input into it and go through the whole process. People would rather just pay the premium and have the finished product. The other thing that's important about this is what people don't understand and realize what happens is now, What's gone on in the past is that for a lot of builders in order to make this work, they are figuring out ways to hide the HST and not claim it and take that completely out of the equation so they can make more money. But the idea would be that if you go this route, which I'm mentioning with taking the initial purchase price back out of the sale price, is now one, you're going to have all your builders paying your trades legitimately instead of trying to get these guys to work in cash because everyone's trying to hide the HST, which now means not only is the government going to get more money back on this on this amount here, but they're also going to get all the trades now claiming proper tax returns because they're claiming their income properly. We've really got to look at the big picture and not the small picture and look at it from a proper angle and have guys who, you know, I'm happy to do this, like myself who are involved in this business and are in the trenches every day and see what's going on instead of people that are just out there making all these uh, random ideas and just trying to throw things out and make everyone feel really happy because the government's trying to do something to calm this down. At the end of the day, we got money being as cheap as it is, like I said it earlier. So until interest rates rise, which eventually they will go up, let's call a spade a spade, um, you won't see that much of a pullback on the market because right now there is just not enough supply and way too much demand. Anyways, if you want more information on this, always happy to discuss it further. Feel free to DM, sorry, DM, email, text, chat, whichever works best for you. Always happy to help out in any way possible. Other than that, take care, be safe, stay positive, and uh, I look forward to speaking to you soon. All the best. Take care. Bye-bye.